So here's Fulcum. Fulcum. His third appearance is first in relief. One complete game. His record is one and one. Hasn't allowed any home run balls. Mike Bale could change that in a hurry. And also change this game right along with it. He's walked five, struck out seven. Committed one balk. Well, the Cardinals certainly had some team success last year, and this guy is one of the big reasons. He was a 10-game winner. He was 10 and 6. All right, Mike. Bases full, one away. And Mike Vale, a 500 hitter with four for eight is up. Ball one. Here's a chance for the Cubs to go ahead with one swing. It's 12 to 9, St. Louis. That's a ball. Ball two, no strikes. And he looks down at Joey Amalfitano. Would you have him take here, Milo? He's followed by Buckner. Two and oh. That's a little close. Ball three. no strikes oh we had him swinging on three and oh had the green light and it is just out of Timmons reach ball three strike one hey we just got a wire a call rather from a cable viewer out in Los Angeles Somebody named Mal Klugman called. He said, it's true. The 1930 Phillies did average 300, but they gave up 7.7 .7 runs per game, and he said they really finished 40 games out <laughs> with a batting order that <laughs> averaged better than 300 per man, all for one through eight. There's a fan who's keeping up with us. Ball three, strike one. Come on, kid. Had one grand slam, and he did that against the Mets, an old team he's with used to be in the Cardinal organization he'd like to do something to them right here big swing ball three strike two last July Scott Thompson went five for five days this is the first cup to do that since Scott did it last July ball three strike two Swing, went for a bad pitch actually. And Vale strikes out. Well, here you go, folks. One of those confrontations that you dream about all winter. The game on the line right at this minute. The Cubs down by three with the bases full and two out, and Bill Buckner up, and you can bet me that Mr. Boyer is going to come out and maybe make a pitching change. Minnesota kept the Angels reeling. Twins beat uh, California 8 to 1. Here comes the pitching chain. He does not want a right-hander at this point to pitch to Buckner. So Fulgham came in and did his job. He faced one batter and struck him out. This is Hood. Long way to go. This ball game's a long way from over, but the Cubs should get something here. They need to get something here. They needed to get a fly ball out of Vale, if nothing yes. else. Yes. Buckner has hit two grand slams, one as a Cub. 
WGN Television 9 Chicago, just about 4 o'clock Central Standard Time. I'm Jack Brickhouse, along with Milo Hamilton. We've got ourselves one of the most exciting games of the year already. And every time we turn around, we find ourselves saying that lately, Milo. It's been one of those crazy weeks, and we're just getting started with this season. <laughs> Let's check those runners again. There's Mike Tyson on third. On second base there, we see Steve Dillard. And over at first is Yvonne de Jesus. Now the batter, Bill Buckner. Put his 0-1 this year. He's been in four ball games. No saves. So Don Hood throws, and that fastball misses. Ball one. Been with Baltimore, Cleveland, last year with Cleveland and New York. They signed him as a free agent. Thirty years old, been around a while. There's a line shot, left field, takes hit, one run is in. The ball played on the hop by Bonds. Here comes Dillard, he's in. And the Cubs are within one. Oh, boy. To Jesus stopping the second as Buckner comes through with a two-run single. And now the score of this ball game is the Cardinals 12, the Cubs 11. The tying run is in scoring position. The lead run is on base. The batter is Larry Bittner. Jack, Bill Buckner right now is swinging the ball where it's pitched as well as I've ever seen him. He's just going right where it is. He's not trying to overpower anybody. That pitch away from him. A lot of his hits this year have been to that opposite side. He's two for five today, which means that altogether he has 18 hits today and uh, as of today and 39 at bats. Come on, Larry. Let's up oh, now ball. Looks like the third out. Overfell throws and Bittner is out to retire the side. But... They're sawing wood and working hard, and they're climbing, climbing, and climbing. Two runs, four hits, no errors. A couple of men left at the end of seven complete innings to score this ball game. St. Louis 12, the Chicago Cubs 11. Right center and. And this crowd is up all the way around. He just left his feet and enjoy this one again, folks. Watch this. Knows he can't reach it, leaves his feet, dives, hangs on. And now let's look at him from behind. Look at this. Going over, knows that the arm isn't long enough, leave those feet, grab that ball, and hang on. What a play by that kid. Oh, man. Well, Preston said he's my best center fielder. That's why he's out there. He's just going to kind of ease him into this thing, not let his confidence be shattered by letting him go against maybe some pitchers that he might be overmatched against at this stage. Boy, what a play. You'll see that on the highlights at nine. <laughs> Rosenberg's on the phone right now to the tape room telling him to hold that play. This is Ted Simmons. He's been on base with a walk, a single, a walk, and a double. And scored three times. Fouled off. Ted Simmons for power and average might be as good a switch hitter as there is around two and one oh it took a little something off got the breaking ball away and got enough of the corner and it's two and two Boy, if you can't have fun watching these Cubs the way they're scoring runs and battling these teams. After showing him the off speed, ran the high hard one inside, but too close, that makes it three and two. That's the name of pitching, though. Change those speeds, move that ball around. Let's see what he does here. One out, nobody on. Bill Cardell did a good job today. Two scoreless innings. Popped over here. Barry Foote should have a play. Now it's circling. Doesn't get it. 
When he started out, it looked like he was in full command. Then it got up into that wind up above the upper deck. And one of life's really embarrassing moments for a catcher. Well, same thing happened to Simmons. He can sympathize with Barry. Wind blew it back into the playing area where it would have been routine. He just gave up on it and figured it was automatically high on the screen. Think, uh, think of his embarrassment when it lit about six feet from him. I had another payoff. Boy, walked him. Now he's walked for the third time and been on base every time up here today. First pass given up, of course, by Tidrow. And it is the fifth walk of a Cardinal in the game. Bobby Bonds has been a thorn in our side. Single, two-run homer, another hit. He's driven in four runs. Tidrow, the fifth Cub pitcher. The Cardinals have used four pitchers. 23 runs, 33 hits. Strike across the letters. Bonds, Reitz, and Forsh have homered for the Cardinals. De Jesus has homered for the Cubs. <laughs> 0 and 2 on Bobby Bonds. Bonds and Tidrow would have been teammates at one time with the Yankees. Cardinal bullpen is quiet. Suter is loosening in the Cub bullpen. And 0 2 to Bonds. Yeah, he struck him out, and did he do it with some good stuff. First strikeout for the Cub right-hand reliever. That is the third strikeout of a Cardinal in this ball game, And that will bring up George Hendrick. I'm going to say this much, Milo. Boyer's got himself a tough batting order again this year. Everywhere you look, you see a guy who can win a ball game for you, starting right at the top. And then you work your way down through Kernandy, Simmons, Bonds, now Hendrick, then Reitz. He really had something on that fastball because Hendrick, a pretty good hitter, got around late on him. Suter won't, won't throw a thing in the bullpen. He's too busy watching the game now. He's frozen out there. Runner at first, Simmons, a walk, put him there, two down. Pedro, quick here. There's Suter. Just kind of watching the game without buying a ticket. <laughs> Look at those innings and look at those runs, huh? 12 to 11 Cardinals. Ooh, Wind into right and going to drop in. Simmons will take a token turn at second and that is all. The 0 and 2 pitch. He tried to sneak one over. Yes, he did. Hendrick can go with that ball to the opposite side and he did it very well. That is their 15th hit. So the Cardinals setting up shop here. Reaches the batter. He's had a homer and a double, driven in three runs. Boy, he comes north and starts hitting the minute he leaves the dugout, this guy. Little submarine on that one dropped down under and a rising fastball that time. Strike one to Reitz. Scott would be next. Simmons walked. He's at second. Hendrick at first with a base hit. One ball, one strike. This is just a two-game series. Tomorrow we'll be on at 1.15 with the leadoff man. And it'll be Silvio Martinez against Mike Kruko. Thursday's off. And the Pittsburgh Pirates, Chuck Tanner's lumber company, will be here for the weekend. Pedro wanted that call and didn't get it. Two balls and one strike. Redbirds batting, leading by a run. Dropped down again. Fouled it off two and two with two away and two base runners. Cardinals are batting in the eighth. Scoreboard on these two teams looks like the national debt. <laughs> you look across those innings. Now it's three and two. Don't want to make a mistake on this guy. He's a very good hitter and a ball away from him. You'd like to pitch him tight, almost in on his fists or right under the letters if you could. Three and two. 
Runners are ready. There they go. Ball, he walked in. Now the bases are loaded with Cardinals. And Scott will be the hitter, but Preston Gomez is on his way. If he uh, goes to Suter and he's going to, this is one of those rare times when you see Bruce come in with his ball club on the short end, Jack. Right. He becomes our second pitcher of the inning and sixth of the game. Bullpen on parade at Wrigley today. It's been that kind of a game on both sides. So Suter will come in with the bases loaded, but that kind of goes with the territory of being a relief pitcher. And he'll be looking at Tony Scott. Hernandez, who lined the ball hard to right center to start the inning. Boy, you look back now on the play that Lascano made really big. Oh, boy. If he can get him out of here, that can be a tremendously big play. Then he walked Simmons, then struck out Bonds like he had his number. But then Hendrick on a two-strike pitch. Got a base hit, and then he walked Reitz. That's what started Tidrow's problem when he tried to get cute and sneak one over on Hendrick on the 0-2 pitch instead of wasting one. And the Cardinals, as usual, can throw some switch hitters at you. Templeton, Simmons, Scott, three of them today. That's a strike. One and one. Bases loaded. Cannot afford to fall way behind again. Stay right. One and two. Simmons at third with a walk. Hendrick at second with a base hit. Reitz at first with a walk. Suter trying to get the Cubs out of a major jam up in the eighth inning. Cardinals leading 12 to 11. The one two. He struck him out. Suter just came in through a split fingered fastball. The bottom dropped out. Let's see if that can give the Cubs a big lift here. And here's the pitch again. Watch this ball drop. Somebody pulled a plug on that one. Right off the end of the table. And here's that catch again by Lascano that started the inning and turned out to be a great catch. So. They leave the bases loaded. It's still Cardinals 12, Cubs 11. The new pitcher for the visiting Cardinals, Roy Thomas. No record, no saves. His fifth appearance, he's worked three and two third innings, seven hits, six runs, five of them earned, no gopher balls, one walk, two strikeouts, and he becomes the fifth Cardinal pitcher and the 11th pitcher in the game. Jerry Martin will start off the bottom of the eighth. Jerry's three for four. Jerry's driven in three runs today. Then it'll be Barry Foote followed by Lascano. I'd like to see the fans give him another roar when he steps in. Let him know that he's appreciated for that great catch. Because at the stage in that youngster's life, that pat on the back from the fans could mean a lot to him. He's just kind of feeling his way along and made a brilliant play on Hernandez in the top of the inning. Fly ball out into shallow center. Is any? Yeah, I guess the center fielder is finally going to say, I'll take it, and he does. That's Scott. So Thomas is, gets the first man out, Jerry Martin. Got to bring up Barry Foote. Woods had a couple of hits and driven in three runs. He's two for four. On this kind of a day, it's hard to find somebody who hasn't contributed. Cubs have 19 hits. The Cardinals, 15 hits. Looked like uh, Barry was trying to tie the game on one fell swoop here. Thomas, born in Quantico, Virginia, 6'6", 190. 
He's thrown foot two let-ups here, almost as much as to say, hey, if you're going to hit one out of me, on me, you're going to do it all on your own. And he throws the breaking ball way upstairs, two and one. Lascano will be next. We had an opening day with these fellows several years ago that wound up being called uh, because of darkness. It was uh, like a 10 to 10 ball game or something. Uh, and uh, so it was a tie game. So the whole thing had to be played over, but the records went in the book. And the guy sitting in the booth next to us, uh, Mike Shannon, who was playing right field for the Cardinals at that time, said, what's going on here? The season hasn't even officially started. I'm already over six. There's a line drive out into left center. Ball well hit. Ball is gone. Line drive. Home run. Got out of here before you could bat your eye. He just kept throwing him that lollipop and very put the boy. Would you believe, folks, well, that hey. we get a tie game at 12? His second home run of the year. And Lascano bunts. It's a beauty. He can fly. The throw. Safe. The Cubs are dazzling them now with footwork. Now let's take another look at the home run. And hey, that was a pretty good pitch as right. it turned out. It was a low hit pitch, and he just got it and lined it into those seats. There hadn't been those all those bleacher bums out there. It might have taken out a row of seats. It was really hip. So now with a bunt single by Carlos Lascano, potential go-ahead run is on base. The Cubs have 21 hits. Be a shame to waste 21 hits, wouldn't it? <laughs> They're thinking about Lascano here. And if, they, if he splits his concentration here, little Mike might get a fastball to hit. He's going. Bouncer. Off the pitcher's leg. It'll be safe. Every... Oh, he got it. It was off the bag. Hernandez cheated and got away with it. Lascano's at second base. Now, here it is again. It, it caroms off Thomas's leg. Templeton comes over and fires. Now, let's see here. Now, let's get another look. If we can catch Hernandez's feet here. Hmm, boy, was that close. Well, if he's on the bag, it's only barely. And I got to say that Wendelstedt is a lot better umpire than I am, and he was a lot closer to the play. This is Dillard. He's one for one. Remember, he uh, came into the game to play and then batted in the seventh inning, got a hit, and drove, which scored our 11th run. Barry puts Homer has tied the game. We're in the eighth inning. There's a line drive to left. Ball's going to be caught. And the side has been retired. Boy, there were some shots in that inning. Roy Thomas really lived a charmed life in that inning with only one run scoring. The run coming on Barry Foote's second homer. And there it is. The Cardinals are way out in front in this game at one time. 12 to 6. The Cubs have caught them. So we're going to the ninth, and it's up to Suter to hold them. We are tied. Redbirds 12, Cubbies 12. Well, Dane Orge is going to be a pinch hitter. Suter's job clear cut here, Jack Holdem, and we've got the top of the batting order coming up in the bottom of the ninth. Right, all tied up 12 to 12, and Orge is batting in the pitcher's spot now. He's batting ninth. Batting, of course, for Thomas. He'll be followed by Templeton, then Oberfeld. And Suter fires away. That's a little low. That's ball one. 36 hits in this ball game and 24 runs. That's a ball. Orange is hitting 182. He has two hits and 11 at bats this year. Both singles. Check that. Both home runs. Two hits, both homers. Last spring at this time, and in the spring training, he was the hottest thing they had in camp. So far, both these managers have handled their pitchers well. They've made their changes, but they haven't used up uh, the aces yet. Suter is still in the ball game as the ace of the Cubs staff, and Littell is ready for the Cardinals. 
So he'll pitch the ninth. There's a ground ball. And it's Tyson playing a deep second base. Throws one away. That brings up Gary Templeton. Well, at one time, the Cardinals led by a score of 6-2. to two. Another time, they led by a score of 12-6. to six. And when 12-6 to six came, the Cubs started to go a little bit. They got three runs in the fifth. They got two in the seventh. They got one in the eighth, and that adds up to 12. <laughs> Ground ball, right of second, base hit. Now look out for this guy. He can fly. He's liable to give it the try. Templeton stole 26 bases last year. So far this year, he has two stolen bases in three attempts. Obert fell, the batter. 0 for 5. There he goes. Here's the throw by foot. He is out at second. Out for Perry. Hooey! Hey, let's look at this one again. And a Terry foot with that fine arm. And De Jesus is all set. Here's the runner isolated. Let's see this one again. Oh, yeah. Nice call, Mr. Pulley. <laughs> and I'll tell you something. Barry Foote did a great job because that was not a good pitch to handle. He had to go down in the dirt and backhand it. Typical split finger fastball right in the dirt by the time it gets to the catcher. Way down there low. Ball two, strike one out, Overfell. Two out and nobody on. Ground ball. Fair back of first. Buckner has it. And it's a put out of first, and the side is retired. No runs. One hit. No errors. Nobody left. Any old kind of a run wins the ball game for the Cubs. We're going to the battle of the bottom of the ninth. The score. Cardinals 12, the Cubs 12. With Mike Phillips. And the new pitcher is Mark Littell. And guess who's going to bat? The one guy you want to see in the batter box for the Cubs today, Mr. Yvonne De Jesus. Right, he's five for five, and he went for the cycle in the first five innings against Mark Littell, a veteran reliever, used to be with Kansas City. He has no record this year in three outings. ERA of 541. He's thrown no home run balls. Walked two, struck out two. He's worked three and a third in three previous appearances. That's a strike. Ball one strike one. Mark Littell. Last year, nine and four in 63 appearances with this ball club. There's a slow roller being picked up by Phillips's first opportunity. Didn't have to wait long, did he? So that's one away, and that's how he's going to bat. Dave Kingman. Oh, man, he's batting for Suter. Now, if he does this, Willie Hernandez is warming up for the Cubs, by the way. Big Wouldn't Dave. it be something? <laughs> I let you guys play the first nine, and then let me have one swing, and I'll send everybody home happy. So here's Kingman who was scratched from the starting lineup because of back spasms. Now moving into the batter's box. Seven homers against this club last year. Right, 14 RBIs led the club against the Cardinals. Dave Kingman, as he steps in there right now, hitting 387 with a dozen hits this year, two doubles and five home runs. Mark Littell, the pitcher. Kingman, the batter. What a setup for some heroics. There's a drive. Left field, base hit. So Dave Kingman has singled. The winning run is on base. And Lenny Randall will run. All right, Big Dave. Nice work. Very nice work indeed. As Kingman gives the Cubs a chance to win it now, if they can just move his pinch runner around. 
Here's Bill Buckner. baseman there is Hernandez. There he goes. And he has scored second base. Lenny Randall has just put the winning run in scoring position. Let's look at this one again. The ball bounced into Simmons. And even though Ted got rid of it fast, it still was not a clean throw. And consequently, the infielder couldn't handle it. Templeton couldn't field the ball cleanly. And besides, he's got that base stolen even if he does. So Lenny Randall is now on second base. And it looks like they'll walk Buckner and face Bittner. And that's, that's not the world's easiest choice either. Ball three. No strikes. And there's ball four. One out, ladies and gentlemen. Only one out in the bottom of the ninth. And here comes Larry Bittner. Has two hits today and four at-bats. Tell. All set. Here we go. There's a very high foul ball out of play. Strike one. Again, we remind you, highlights on the news at nine. And boy, have we got the highlights today, and we're not through. The highlight of all highlights may come right now. Sports might need a few extra minutes on that nine o'clock news tonight in order to play all that. There's the big man, Lenny Randall. Time. Larry Bittner facing an outfield is playing the swing a little bit late. Bonds in left, Scott in center, Hendrick in right. Hendrick playing just about straight away. Scott shaded a few steps toward left center, and Bobby Bonds playing maybe a step away to his right, and our left from straight away left field. There's Preston. Reeds at third. Templeton at short. Phillips at second, Hernandez at first, the battery, Littell and Simmons. Strike one the count to Larry Bittner. One out. I thought I saw the senior ready to crack a smile there. That's a ball. Ball one, strike one. Foul ball. Ball one, strike two. Well, there's a customer who is doing what he's not supposed to do. You're not supposed to go on that field. One and two. So he won't be allowed to keep it. One and two. Fly ball foul out of play to the left. It's still ball one, strike two. Strike two. They're not worrying about protecting the line now. They want to prevent any kind of a base hit. They're playing the percentage defensively. That is a strike call. Larry Bittner called out on a knee-high strike. That brings up Jerry Martin. And Larry Bittner is a very angry man. So here's Jerry Martin, who the first three times up today got base hits, a double and two singles. He's three for five.
Here we go. There's a wild pitch. Everybody will move up. Lenny Randall even took the turn at third. Was tempted. So now Buckner moved to second. Randall is on third. And a wild pitch by Mark Littell. Ball one. Jerry Martin, the batter. If he gets on and nobody scores and foot bats, the fellow batting will be the guy who put him back in the ball game with a homer the last time up, Barry Foot. Ball one. That's a ball. Ball two, two and oh. Well, another pitch like that first one in this ball game is over. Ball two, no strikes. Well, like you said, any old kind of a run will do. Any old kind of a run. The cheapest run in the world. It would be like a Corridor Diamond right now. There's one that gets away, and Randall was tempted. Oh, was he tempted. But Simmons retrieved the ball in time. Ball three, no strikes. Ball three, no strikes. That's a strike. Ball three, strike one. Looked like he was taking all the way then. Watch where the catcher's glove is on this pitch. See this? And, uh, he may have just may have been crossed up a little on that pitch. Ball three, strike one. Full swing. Ball three, strike two. Come on, Jerry. A banjo hit, a punch and judy hit, a bleeder, anything. Texas leaguer. Ball three, strike two. Lenny Randall on third, two out, bottom of the night, tied 12 to 12. Here we go. Check swing, ball four. But Logan for Barry Foot. So Barry Foot, who hit a home run the last time at bat, asked the umpire to take a look at that ball. And Lanny Harris okays it. And here's where you'd like to win it for a couple of reasons, Jack, because you've got your ace, Suter, out of the game. They've still got theirs in, Littell. So you'd like to have foot ended here. Here we go. scores Buckner scores Martin scores and Barry foot scores let's look at this one again here it is the climax of an uphill battle the Cubs coming from a 12 to 6 deficit to win this ball game brother
that's Joey Amalfitano and the runner at third, Randall, on this one. There you go. Oh, what a finish. What a totally, absolutely phenomenal finish. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the final score, the Cubs 16, St. Louis Cardinals 12. Back in a moment with a recap on this thriller. All right, that final again, Cubs 16, Cardinals 12. And after that finish, Milo, I can just hardly wait for that 1981 season to get Boy, started. Jack, you've Ooh. got that right, I can tell you. And all of us here at Channel 9 are looking forward to televising over 200 Cubs and Sox games this season. The greatest baseball schedule in television history, no Jack. No question about that, Milo. And, of course, the sooner the better. I'm Jack Brickhouse. This is my old buddy, Milo Hamilton. We're going to be together again this year, and we wish you a very pleasant good evening. We'll see you at the ballpark. Tonight's replay of the Cubs Cardinal Pro Bowl is Pretty was a good call if you're going to stop that nonsense early in the game. Uh, that was a good call.